Sweetheart, come here. You have to see this. Hmm. Look, London. Big Ben, the Houses of Parliament. And down there, traffic on the left. <laughs> Looks different by day, doesn't it? Oh, different and yet exactly how I imagined it. It's going to be a wonderful vacation. I just know it is. I keep telling you not to say vacation. Honeymoon. Our second honeymoon. I'm going to get dressed, because I want to get out there in that city. Martin Trasker. Oh, yes, Mr. Trasker. Come in, please. You got my cable. Yes. As a matter of fact, I was going to call you later this afternoon. I'm what you Americans call an eager beaver, Mr. Hunter. Your company has a manufacturing interest that my company wants to acquire. And I mean to get it, I warn you. I'll pull every dirty trick in the book to get it. But meanwhile, <laughs> welcome to England. Thank you. These are for Mrs. Hunter. I always say if you get to the woman, you get to the man. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. Uh, excuse me, please. Sweetheart, make sure you're decent. We have company. Coffee, Trasker? Oh, I don't want to intrude so early. It's okay. We can talk business meanwhile. Right away. Well, you said you were an eager beaver. So am I. Besides, this is my first trip to London. I want to get you off my neck as soon as I can so I can start enjoying my vacation. It's a deal. Oh, sweetheart. This is Martin Trasker. Remember I told you about him? Oh, yes. Hello. Very nice How to do meet do? you. This is my wife, Teresa. Something wrong? Brad, my name isn't Teresa. Freudian slips, but that one, in front of a complete Susan. stranger to come up with someone else's name. I said I'm I can't sorry. imagine what he must think. I said I was sorry. Sorry? How could you make a mistake like that anyway? And who is Teresa? I told you, I don't know. Oh, come on, Brad. I don't know anyone named Teresa. I promise you. Must have been a name I read somewhere. In the papers, maybe. I don't... In the paper. Of course, that's it. I just read it in the morning paper. Do you swear that's true? Yes, I swear it is true. And I'm very sorry. Well, look, you finish getting dressed, because I have to get back out there to Mr. Trasker. <sighs> Women. Well, that was certainly quite a mistake to make. Yes, it was. Well, Mr. Trasker, let's hear your thoughts, shall we? Well, we're both in the same line of business, manufacturing machine tools. We even buy and sell from each other. And that doesn't make sense. So, in other words, you want to manufacture under license? Yes. Well, why don't I just open a plant here in Europe? Why should I cut you fellas? If in? that's the answer, why haven't you done it before? Come on, Mr. Hunter, level with me. It's an attractive idea, isn't it? But before we go ahead, we have to know more about this gear cutting device. Does it really cut down the work as much as they say? And what are its limitations? Can it cut any kind of steel? And what about the soft metals? No more questions. Oh, these are things I've got to know. What kind of setup do you have? How many can you turn out and in what time? And what are your manufacturing costs? I said no more questions! You hear me? You won't get anything from me. Whatever you try, you won't get anything. Do you know why? Because you can't crack me. You understand? You can't crack me!
Who's he? Matt, what is it? What's the matter with you? I don't know. I'm tired. A time change. A trip from New York. That's it. That must be it. Where to? Anywhere you say. We're strangers. It doesn't matter. Tower of London? No. No. Take me to... Go along Oxford Street. About halfway. Make a turn. There's a square. Grosvenor Square, sir. Where the American Embassy is? No. The other side of Oxford Street. Traveling west. You turn right. There's a small square. It could be Manchester Square. Yes. Yes, that's it. Manchester Square. Take me to Manchester Square. Here we are. What part of the square do you want? The west side. That's where we are. Well, where is it? The big red brick apartment block. I thought you said you were strangers. We are. Funny then. There used to be a block there. Red brick, just like you said. It stood just there. I'd rather know the truth, Brad. It was in 67, wasn't it? Just before I had Tommy. You did that whistle stop business tour of the East Coast, only you didn't stop there, did you? You went on to Europe and met this girl, Teresa, what's her name, and. I'd rather know. There never was any Teresa, and I've never been to Europe before. How did you know about the apartment block? It wasn't there then. I don't know. Susie, I wish I knew the answer. Look, I meet hundreds of people who come to London every day. Maybe one of them mentioned it. For some reason, it just stuck in my mind. Just stuck in my mind. Do you really think that's true? That's the only possible explanation. Oh, Brad. The fun second honeymoon. Yeah. Well, there will be. I promise you. Look, I have to go down and make my apologies to Traska, but when I'm through, I'm going to order us two tickets for a show. Make it a very English show. <laughs> the accents will be so English, you won't be able to understand a word. And then, dinner under the stars. The weather forecast is rain. So, dinner under the rain. It can't be more English than that. I'll be right back. Oh, darling, drop a P.S. to Tommy and Julie, will you? They'll expect it. Oh, yes. Would you give my apologies to Mr. Trasker, too, please? Well, you don't have anything to apologize for, but I certainly do. I really have no explanation at all, except I guess I needed this vacation a lot more than I realized. All I can say to you, Mr. Trasker, is that I'm sorry. Think nothing more of it. Perhaps you did me a favor. Because now you're under an obligation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess I am. Waiter. 
Scotch on the rocks, please. Traska? Same for me. You know, Mr. Traska, you're pretty cool. I'm a good company man, Mr. Hunter. I'd go through fire and water and insults if that's the way to clinch a deal with you. Come in. Oh, would you mind mailing these for me, please? Certainly, madam. You see, the advantages of granting us a license to manufacture are manifold. This is the prospectus I've drawn up. Now, you don't have to carry any expenses in Europe at all, but at the same time, you draw a percentage on everything we make and sell. I'm not going to push. Well, not too hard, anyway. Take them, study them. Any comments you may have, drop them down and we can thrash them out later. I asked you for a scotch. That's right, sir, it is scotch. With ice? On the rocks, yes, sir. Take it away. Sir? I said take it away. Mr. Hunter, I distinctly heard you ask. A gentleman never corrupts good scotch whiskey with ice, does he? But, sir, you... What do you think I am, a foreigner? I'm an Englishman, an English gentleman. Where have you been? Been? Do you know what time it is? Late, I guess. You've been gone nearly eight hours without a word. I was worried sick about you. I was walking. Where? Just walking. Who are you going to phone? You were getting ready to make a call. To whom? To Teresa? I don't know any Teresa. I'm tired. I'm very tired. I know I promised I wouldn't mention it again. It's just that you need help. Help? Darling, you're not well. Look, maybe you're under stress or, or overworked or... Why don't we just pack up all our things and go home? Trask your call today. He told me what happened in the lounge. He said to call him when you're feeling better. Come to bed, darling. Please. I will. I will. Susie, you were right. Overwork, too much stress. It has to be that. Will you forgive me? There's nothing to forgive, is there? I love you, Susie. Come to bed. something I haven't told you. I wasn't going to, but I can't seem to keep it to myself any longer. I saw what you wrote on the card. To the children, Brad. To our children, that's what makes it so awful. That's why I have to tell you. Do you know what you wrote? 
Tommy and Julie. You wrote her name. Teresa. That's why I can't let it alone. That's why the name keeps going round and round in my head. And I have to know who she is. Who is Teresa? I, I... Too much curiosity. Curious people have to be eliminated. Oh, sweetheart. Sweetheart. Oh, Teresa. Teresa. No. Teresa. No. Who is that? No. I want you to relax, Mr. Hunter. Think of my voice as a breeze, a cool, cleansing breeze blowing through your mind, taking away all the cobwebs, all the dark shadows. And there will be nothing that you wish to hide, Mr. Hunter. Nor will there be any hidden aggressions towards your wife, towards anyone. Tell me about Teresa. Teresa. Who is she? A figment of your imagination? Or does she really exist? Yes. Exists. Teresa. Someone you once heard of, through a friend, perhaps? Or someone you know and have met? I don't know. Please don't fight my questions, Mr. Hunter. I don't know! I don't know. Then let us assume that you do know her. Where did you first meet her? In Vienna. We met in Vienna. In Vienna. And when was this? When were you last in Vienna? Never was in Vienna. But you met Teresa there. Yes. We met in Vienna. In Vienna. Then when were you there? I told you I was never in Vienna. Europe, then. This is my first trip to Europe. You have been abroad before, away from the United States? Yes. Ah. When? Long time ago. Where, then? Korea. He was in the army in Korea. Is that where you met Teresa? In Korea? I never met Teresa. But you do know her? Yes. No. Which is it, Mr. Hunter? I don't know! Oh, come on now, come on now. You're holding back on me. You do know Teresa. No! I insist that you do. No! Then why this? Mr. Hunter, look at it. It says here quite clearly, does it not? I love Teresa. Doesn't it? Does it not say that? Yes. And you wrote this? Yes. Then why? Why write this about a woman you do not know? Because I do know her. Of course I do. She's my wife. Teresa is my wife. The sedative I gave him will ensure a good night's sleep tonight. And this should keep him for the week. You still haven't given me an opinion. That's because I feel you've had enough tonight. Please, doctor. Very well. Your husband is undeniably mentally disturbed. 
Not certifiable. Not yet, anyway. Unless you request it. You said he attacked you. I can see the marks on your throat. He didn't know what he was doing. The mentally unstable never do. That's your diagnosis of Brad? Mentally unstable? I'm afraid so. You noticed he seemed reluctant to speak about his war experiences. I wonder, could there be a connection? How? That was nearly 20 years ago. And it was in Korea, not Europe. How could there be a connection? Yes, as you say. Mrs. Hunter, there's nothing you have not told me. A domestic crisis? Another woman? No. No, Brad and I have always been very happy. Well, I can only drag him into a state of calm for so long. Your first instincts were quite right. Get him to go home, be with the family, familiar surroundings. And then get him to cut down on work. What if I can't make him go? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Let me give it some thought, eh? At least he'll get some rest tonight. Good night, Mrs. Hunter. Teresa. Teresa. Well, good morning. It's about time, Lizzie Bones. Hey, I don't know what that doctor gave me, but whatever it was, it sure did the trick. I feel 100% better. 100%? 200% then. Hey, you'd better wear something very plain and not too sexy today. Or I won't let you out of the suite. <laughs> Hold it. Ah, thank you, madam. That was lovely. Morning, sir. Lovely day. Morning. Yes, it is. Lovely day. Your paper, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Trasker? Oh, good morning. Brad Hunter. Yes, much better. Thank you. Uh, that's why I'm calling, to apologize for yesterday. Yes. Well, I'm afraid I was very much under the weather. I... Mr. Hunter? Mr. Hunter? Brad, I thought maybe the two of us could... American Embassy, please. There you are, sir. Some Pellier Towers. Wait for me. But, Jerry, you're the only one I know here to call, and I really need help. Now, hold on. You had a doctor, you said. Yes, but he can't help Brad or me, and we need help. Okay. Okay, there is someone that might be of use, sir. Don't be put up by appearances. He's a darn good man. His name is Earp. Earp? Uh, yeah, that's what everybody says, why and all that. But this guy is Matthew Earp, and a darn good man. I'll have him drop by to see you.
Teresa, I want to speak to Teresa. We met in Vienna. You must be mistaken. There is no one of that name here. Merrow, Charles Merrow. You have the wrong address. I'm sorry. Mrs. Hunter? Yes. Matthew Earp. Yes, I'm not quite what you expected, am I? May I come in? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Earp, do you know why you're here? Hmm. Primarily because Colonel Jeremy, Jerry Pilston, recommended me. He and I once worked together before he joined the embassy here. It was quite dangerous work. Does that give you more to lean on? I'm sorry. It's probably the name, Earp. It conjures up one thing, then you get me, the other thing. Mr. Earp, I'm sure you're very good at your job. No, Mrs. Hunter, I'm not very good. I'm magnificent, the best. But I came here to talk about your husband. Brad, isn't it? Yes. Now, I take it he's in trouble. Bannerheim. He is still not returned. You will ask him to call me the moment he gets back. Yes, very urgent. Brad, darling, we've been waiting for you. Waiting for me? This is Mr. Earp. He's here to help us. No more doctor, Susie. No, I'm not a doctor, Mr. Hunter. I'm a private detective. Detective? Earp? You see, I told you. It's always the same. I ought to change the name, I suppose. But it is a fine old one. He's a friend of Jerry's. Jerry? Jerry Pilston? Did yes. you bring him into this? I'm telling I had to oh, talk to great. someone. That's That's just great. I'm what did sure you tell him? wife just acted out of love and concern for you, Mr. Hunter. I'm sure she did. Thank you, Mr. I hope you'll be able to thank me for more. Now, your wife has been telling me the whole story. It's interesting. Interesting? Mm. <laughs> well, I've heard that you Englishmen had a gift for understatement. But interesting? You don't think this is the ramblings of a demented mind? Do you? No. Well, then let's start with three assumptions, shall we? That you are quite sane, that I know my job, and together we might come up with a logical answer. Would you like a drink, Mr. Earp? Mm, thank you. Bourbon. Bourbon? I spent an awfully long time with the Americans, and my palate has been educated or corrupted according to your viewpoint. Well, an Englishman who appreciates bourbon, that's something. Thank you. Before I drink your liquor, Mr. Hunter, I must point out that all three of my assumptions could be wrong. That's fair enough. You do understand my meaning. You might be as nutty as a fruitcake. <laughs> oh, you must be related to old Wyatt. Well, if I am, I keep quiet about it. There's a terrible bungler, you know, Wyatt Earp. That fiasco, the OK Corral, all that shooting face to face, when a good scatter gun from ambush would have done the job much more efficiently. Is that your code? Never give a sucker an even break? Only of his left forearm. Your health. Cheers. Excuse me. Oh. <clears throat> so, where have you been? Well, you left here in a hurry to go where? I went to an apartment block. St. Pelia Towers, apartment 42. To look for Teresa? Yes. Well, she wasn't there, I hope. What? 
Well, if she were there, then the case would be closed. And I should be unable to charge you my excessive fee, and I warn you, it will be excessive. Now, why St. Palia Tires? I'm not really sure. But this morning, just before breakfast, I glanced at the newspaper, and suddenly it flashed in my head. You see, I think the newspaper might have something to do with it. What newspaper? The London Times. And it isn't here now? No, it isn't. And you think that you saw that address in the paper, is that it? I don't know. What does Teresa look like? I don't know. I've never seen her. You seem very sure of that. Sure? I'm not sure of anything. Except there isn't any Teresa. There can't be. Teresa, Mero. Mero? Charles Mero. Did you say Mero? Yes. Just now when I went to the apartment block, I asked for Charles Mero. But that's crazy. Why would I go there and ask for me? What? Charles Mero. I'm Charles Mero. I went to Ferngate College. The headmaster's name is Leslie Cromer. You were right. We should have packed and gone home. But I can't run out. I have to stay here and find out what this is all about. If I'm sane or not. Herb will come up with something. Confirmation that I should be put away. Oh, darling, there's got to be an answer to all this. I tried to kill you, didn't I? I love you, Susie, and yet I tried to kill you. A waiter, bring me some cigars, will you? Yes, sir. The best you have. Right away, sir. Brad. Yes, sweetheart. Cigars. I ran out. Brad, you don't smoke. You never have. Let's get out of here, Susie. Get some air. I'll take a walk. what happened how is he oh cuts abrasions badly bruised nothing serious thank god but he could have been killed and i understand they haven't found the driver yet no but you were there yes and you saw the driver uh, i don't know i don't think so it happened so quickly and conveniently are you suggesting it could have been deliberate mrs hunter i exist on suspicions most of them unfounded <laughs> why would anyone want to run us down may i see your husband i have some news for him Oh, I'm sure, I'm sorry. Darling, it's Mr. Irvin. Well, howdy, partner. Good evening, Mr. Hunter. Well, I'm sorry to hear you fell foul of our London traffic. Well, lousy drivers are the same all over, I oh. guess. Your reflexes must have been awfully good. Yes, you know, I've been lying here thinking the same thing. That car was coming straight at us. Darling, Mr. Earp thinks it just might it have It might have been much worse, Mr. Hunter. Meanwhile, I have some information. Oh? I did some checking up on apartment 42, St. Palia Tires. No Teresa or Charles Mellow, I'm afraid. The apartment is owned by J. Bannerheim, and he's been in residence there for nearly 20 years. Yes, but one interesting fact. Mr. Bannerheim is an Austrian national. He was born in Vienna. Vienna. Mm. That's where you were supposed to have met Teresa. I mean, it's a tiny point. He doesn't lead anywhere yet. But do you think it will? Oh, Mr. Hunter, you must have tossed a pebble in a pool at some time, watched the tiny ripples spread. Did you know that it's those tiny, tiny ripples that eventually erode the whole back? Well, I've made some more fruitful inquiries. The Ferngate College. You've located such a place? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, in the county of Hampshire. And? Well, unfortunately, it was burned to the ground some 20 years ago, most of the records with it. Therefore, there is no way of knowing that Charles Mellow was educated there. But, well, fasten your seatbelts. The headmaster's name was Leslie Cromer. You're a fool, Bannerheim. 
Both of you. Fools. I tried to reach you. All day I tried. But you were out riding. Always riding. It's the major pastime of an English gentleman, didn't you know? Well, I had to act on my own initiative. I sent Sega here to follow, find out who he was, where he was staying. And then attempt to run him down in the most clumsy fashion. Well, this time your oaf-like inefficiency has proved fortunate for all of us. What do we know about this man? His name is Bradley Hunter, an American citizen. That's all? Yes. I suppose you have checked to see if he's known to us? I, um, I'll attend to it at once, Sago. Of course, it didn't occur to you to ask why he came to this apartment, why he asked for Teresa, or what else he might know. You're worse than a fool, Bannerheim. You're dangerous. Please, when I saw this, I didn't know what to do. Why send him away? Why not ask him in, find out what he wanted? I panicked, yes, I confess it, I panicked. I'm rusty. Well, we all are. Well, you very well know we haven't had an assignment in years. Nobody has asked for Teresa in years. Nobody since you, in fact. Almost 20 years. Yes, I was the last. There will be no more incidents, though. This must be handled with kid gloves. So uh, curb Sagar's homicidal tendencies for the moment. At least till we know more about Hunter. Get me a drink. We may eventually get some action, though, Bannerheim. Like the old days, eh? I was young in the old days. I don't want them anymore. All these years, and you still forget. No ice, never corrupt. Good scotch with ice betrays your breeding. Mr. E, that's everything I can remember. Every crackpot remark I've made since I arrived here. And now I think I'm going to go out. Out? Yes, and take a walk. You think you should? Yes. Mr. Hunter, you saw service in Korea. Some? Night patrols, that kind of thing. <laughs> Enough to make me feel like an owl. Why? Well, it's just that a man who's had that experience never forgets. He's always noticing things. If you were being stalked, for instance, even in a big city, he'd, he'd sense it. He'd know. Well, if I'm being followed, I'll call Teresa. That's very familiar. If I'm being followed, or in trouble of any kind, call Teresa. Call her where? I don't know. Just call her. <laughs> well, maybe the walk will clear my head. Maybe I'll come up with something. We have just received an answer. There is nothing known on Bradley Hunter. And? Well, they didn't leave it there, did they? They are deeply interested, of course. We are to keep them informed. They're sending someone over? No, we are to handle it ourselves. I see. If you were to speak to them, you could persuade them to send someone. This game is not for us anymore. It's been too long. We are all of us out of practice. Some of us, Bannerheim, not all of us. We'll have to bring a hunter in. Bring him in. And talk to him, my dear chap. Ask him a few pertinent questions, and perhaps a few impertinent ones, too. Sometime tomorrow, I'd say. Doubt we'll be ready for him before then. I suppose you can handle it. Call me when you've made the arrangements. How do you want this job done, rough or smooth? What's the difference? Smooth, you want me to take him back after you finish with him. Smooth, then. But you won't be taking Mr. Hunter back. Excuse me. What is it? I thought so. I hoped so. I was halfway down the street when it hit me. What? Teresa. Call Teresa. Forgive me, I better explain. Please do. The phone. You see, it's only recently that the London Exchange has gone over to all figure numbers. Before that, you dialed letters and figures. If you wanted Grosvenor, for instance, you dialed G-R-O, then the number. Waterloo was W-A-T. It's very, very recent. You see, even this hotel hasn't got around to changing its phones yet. Do you see? I don't see her. Well, spell Teresa for me. Well, come along, spell it. Um, T-H-E-R-E-S-A. Seven letters. Hmm? And the London call has seven digits. Call Teresa. T-H-E-R-E-S-A. 
R E S A. Hello. Oh, hello. I'd like to speak to Teresa, please. I beg your pardon. I'd like to speak to Teresa, please. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but Mrs. Mallow is not here at the moment. Mallow? Did you say Mrs. Mallow? Yes, sir. Who is this, please? Um, Charles. Uh, is Charles there, please? I'm sorry, but Mr. Mallow is not here either. Who shall I say call? I got nowhere. I walked, I thought, I came up with nothing. Where did you get that? I don't know. I... I don't remember. Do ride, Mr. Hunter. Yes, but not, not in clothes like these. Paid for with your credit card. Plumwoods. Who recommended that you go there? Go where? Plumwoods. It's the most exclusive sporting tailors in the city. Well, you made a long trek indeed to buy a set of clothes you'd never wear. I must be losing my mind. I... Now, I doubt that, Mr. Hunter. We found Teresa. Well? No. I've never seen it before. Well, you're looking at the home of Charles and Theresa Meadow. Apparently, she's a tall, elegant woman with fine features. There's a habit of exercising a dog at about, about this time of day. So would you go out now and stand over there? What? Then that she can't avoid seeing you. Oh, um, don't forget the camera. Kind of joke. I'll tell you when to laugh. The woman meant nothing to me, but the man on the door, I've seen him before. Where? I don't know, but I recognized him right away. Recognize him? That man is Charles Merrow. That man is me. Take us back to the hotel, darling. You take him down to the car. We will leave him at the pet shop. They will look after him. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. His favorite food, he would pine without it. Wouldn't you, Sigmund? Oh, Sigmund. You will come to learn. Put your trust only in animals. Only dumb animals. They will never betray you. All right, I'll be down directly. I'm too old for this. Too old.
Is Mr. Masgard in? Masgard. Oh, I'm sorry. They must have given me the wrong room number. It's most unlikely. And please excuse me. <laughs> I, I right. wonder to save me going all the way down. Would it be possible for me to telephone reception from here? Oh, of course. Come on in. Thank you. It's right over there. It will just numb you, make you more acquiescent. <laughs> now, Mrs. Hunter, you and I are just going to walk out of here, just the two of us. But look, you still haven't you still haven't answered my question. Why can't I go straight to Merrow and ask him what this is all about? It's because you were nearly killed, Mr. Hunter. I was involved in an accident. Perhaps, perhaps not, Mr. Hunter. The fact that we now know where Charles and Teresa Merrow are is our only ace. Now, don't discard it too easily. You don't play bridge? No. Poker, then? Some? Why? And well, let's keep our ace in the hole for the moment. Now, you understand that? Yes. Good. Right. I'll ask you if I can find out some more. Where? From our Austrian gentleman, Jay Bannerheim. And I suggest you, Mr. Hunter, get a very, very good night's sleep. hands, Mr. Hunter, and will remain so as long as you cooperate. Who are you? Nice and quietly, Mr. Hunter, please. Where is my wife? What? You know the situation, Mr. Hunter. I want to see my wife. I'll take you to her immediately. We'll go down by the back stairs. Gone away. Where to? Just away. Must have been an emergency. An emergency? Well, he took his bag. Mr. Bannerheim took his doctor's bag. I didn't know Mr. Bannerheim was a doctor. He must be. Kind of doctor anyway, the things he keeps in that bag. It's a fine day, Bannerheim. A fine day. Just like the old days. Are you sure you're a policeman? Madam, you only have to look at my feet, the world weariness in my eyes, and the ten pound note clutched in your hands. It doesn't seem right. Yes, I agree. The hairs on the back of my head tell me the same thing. There's something about this place that isn't right. Excuse me. Oh. 
I have a feeling that this is going to cost me another ten pounds. Right? All right. Twenty. Okay. shouldn't have done that. Oh, but I should. Definitely. Now stand back. Now look. I bet you didn't know we had a radio behind there, did you? Bring them in. Stay uh, Please sit down, Mrs. Hunter. And you, Mr. Hunter. Here, sir, please. Now, I'm afraid you're both still suffering from the effects of sedation. But just sit quietly, and I hope this won't take long. Indeed, it mustn't take long. Why are you doing this? What is he to you? That is what I mean to find out. your eyes, please. Here's yours. Mr. Hunter? Mr. Hunter? As soon as you're ready, I'd like a word with you. Brad. Brad. You don't mind if I call you Brad? That is your name, isn't it? Yes. Bradley Hunter. Good. Good. Now, I'm a good friend. You understand that? A good friend. Good friend. And I want you to tell me about yourself. I want to know all about you. Matthew, you're going to pieces. I was raised in Minnesota. But you're a big boy now, Brad. What is your connection with the FBI? FBI. The CIA, then. You're a member of the CIA, aren't you, Brad? I was in the army and drafted in 1949. 
It's fighting it. No. No. Brad, you remember calling on me at my apartment in St. Pelia Towers? You remember that, don't you? St. Pelia Towers, apartment 42. Now, why did you call there, Brad? Teresa. To see my wife, Teresa. Uh, Plumwoods, is Mr. Edwards still with you? Good. I yes, I'd like a word with him, please. Yes, I'll hold on, thank you. I am Teresa. I am Teresa. Teresa. You have something to tell me? They sent me. Who? We met in Vienna. Who are you? I am Charles Merrow. I was born in Oxford, educated at Ferngate College. I have been well taught what to drink, smoke, where to buy my clothes. How do I know this is true? The newspaper, the London Times. I am to bring a copy torn in a certain way. This is the first sign. I am to go to an apartment in Manchester Square or to St. Pelia Towers, apartment 42. I am to ask for Teresa. If there is danger, I will be turned away. I must then go to a phone and dial Teresa. New instructions will be issued. What are your orders? What are your orders? We are to be married, you and I. It is the best possible cover. Then I will take control of the whole spy cell. possible. That was my briefing. My exact briefing before I was sent to this country nearly 20 years ago. Oh, hello. Mr. Edwards. Yes, sir. Matthew Webb. Oh, how are you? Yes, I'm you? fine, thank you. And you? Good. Oh, oh, very well. I'm glad to hear it. Excellent. Yes, Mr. Edwards, teeny tiny problem. Oh. Charles Meadow. Uh, Mr. Meadow, sir. Now, is he a customer of yours? Oh, indeed he Yes, of course he is. Yes, I've heard him mention you many times. Oh, a plum would you? What? No, no, no. You personally. Oh, I see. Look, the fact is, Mr. Edwards, I'm supposed to be having dinner with him tonight. Yes. And it's terribly difficult, you see. I I've mislaid his address. Oh, it's uh, Kensington. No, no, no. Sir, no, not his address in town. Oh. The other one. Oh, yeah, his country residence. Yes, sir. out of town. Yes, that one. Look, <laughs> Look I know you don't normally divulge info about your customers, but I wondered if you could... Would he address me of some use? Yes, to indeed you, it sir? would be. Yes, I do. What? See your yes, extremely embarrassing, yes. yes. Uh, well, here we are, sir. It, it's the Gables Farm Stock. Yes, Street. that's it. Uh, did you get that? Yes, down, fine, sir? thank you. Uh, we must yes. settle your account. Yes, indeed. Soon, yes, sir. yes, we must. It's yes, been bye. Long it's incredible. How could he know the briefing so thoroughly? And why wait so many years to use the information? We have to know, Bannerheim. No. We have to get on with it. Another shot could kill him. And then you would learn nothing. We're learning nothing anyhow. I'm ordering you, Bannerheim. No, no. He was in Korea and he knows your face. Does that mean anything? No, please. Korea. Tell me about Korea, Brad. I was there, infantry division, captured. And you know my face? Yes. But how? Where? I'm interested, Brad, dear chap, deeply interested. 
You were captured. Tell me about that. I was selected for special treatment. Officer. Decorated. Important. Important they break me. They flew me out of Korea. Where, Brad? Where did they fly you to? Long way. To Europe. A special camp. A center, a psychological intelligence center. Where? They tried to brainwash me, but I held out. I held out. What center? Center, PI Center 79. Center 79, but that's where we were trained. My name is Charles Merrill. I am a typical English gentleman. I was born in Oxford, educated at Ferngate College. <laughs> I have been well taught what to drink, smoke, where to no buy my clothes. No danger, Bannerheim. No need for panic. It's a mistake. What do you mean? What possible link can there exist between us and an American brainwashed in Korea? But he wasn't brainwashed in Korea. You heard him say he was taken on a long journey to Center 79. Don't you see? I was briefed at Centre 79. Over and over, they burnt those words into my mind. I am Charles Meadow, a typical English gentleman. And in the next room was a man they thought they couldn't brainwash, but they did. Unconsciously, they did. His poor adult mind stored my briefing away, stored it for nearly 20 years, until he made a trip to Europe and for the first time, probably, held a copy of the London Times in his hand. Word in the clear, Bannerheim. And we can let them go? Unfortunately, no. Teresa and I will go back to town. Always you leave the dirt to me. And Sagar. He enjoys it. Come, my dear. Brad. It will be quick, I promise. No, please, for God's sake. What is it? Why are you standing there like that? He is standing there like that. Because I have a .38 revolver pointed at his kidneys. And a .38 through the kidneys, if not invariably fatal, can be excruciatingly painful. Now, I can't promise to hit a kidney at this range. The handgun is notoriously inaccurate. But I can promise to hit some part of your anatomy. Now, you don't know how ridiculous I feel saying this, sir. But if you would please place your handgun upon the table. And the rest of you, with the exception of Mr. and Mrs. Hunter, if you would line up against that wall. I have a deceptively soft voice. But I did win a military cross for disposing of 23 of the enemy single-handed. A rather inferior enemy, I must confess. But 23 of them just the same. Thank you. Now, I'm not a stupid hero. I telephoned the police and the special branch before barging in. So doubtless as many car loads of them are on their way now. Meanwhile, we face one another. But... Experience the kindness, I always say. That, a certain light-footedness, and a degree of optimism. Ah, the cavalry. Late, as usual. It's Matthew, and I try to keep the spirit of Wyatt alive. Mrs. Hunter, I'd ask you to do me a favor. 
whatever, anything. Please don't mention the gun. It's a war souvenir. And I have no license for it. Or bullets. <laughs>